ask to the organization this afternoon uh, in my uh, after a stage of uh, time when I was out because I, I know I was due some times back. Uh, I did not expect that I would be coming back to the Ministry of Energy and I think it is God's will that I'm here and I just want to request of you to help me to accomplish what God wants me to accomplish in the energy sector. So it's a request I'm making, a plea to work with me to accomplish the purpose for which I've come back to accomplish and we will be seeking to understand that purpose together. But it's basically a very clear purpose. We want to give service to this economy. We are the only of take of power in this country. Uh, Kenya Power, like I told you, our ESCOM team, is not even like the banks. We are the only of take of power. Kenya Power, if it ran into a problem, it's not like if any of the one of the banks run into a problem. Kenya Power is so critical to the growth of this economy. Uh, but I don't know how many of us do understand that. So that uh, when we have the challenges we have today, we have to work and come out of them. If Kenya Airways was not working today because they equally have challenges or any other organization, we can fly any other airline and get to our destination. But if Kenya Power was to surmount to the challenges it is facing, we will have a serious problem. So I want to really, like I told the team, together with the peers, that we'll work together to address some of those challenges. They are not insurmountable. Because uh, really, there is goodwill. I know there's going to be goodwill from all of us. I did tell your ESCOM team, I do not intend to basically see the director of criminal investigation coming to help us to connect power to our customers. I honestly think that some of us have been mistreated and I want to apologize to the government that we have brought DCI to try and help us to address Issues they don't understand. When your team, your regional team, were all, all introduced, they have education engineer so and so, engineer engineer so and so. I did not hear uh, anybody carrying the title of running a region with because of an investigation. They are basically they are basically they are basically qualified to do the job. They have earned it on merit. To be an engineer, you don't just go through university. You have to go through the ethical and practices of the engineering board to be able to qualify to even just be an engineer after going through college. So I want to really uh, say that I respect engineers. I expect the best of our engineers to support Kenya Power to deliver us from the challenges that we are facing. But there's got to be goodwill. We have to address the challenges of governance uh, from inside. I did say to your ESCOM team, the solutions afflicting us will come from inside, it will not come from outside. I do not expect that uh, special um, task forces, I do not expect that investigation will help us to come out of the challenges that we face today unless there is a will, unless there is a drive from inside to change we are not going to address those challenges. What are some of the challenges? We know very well the challenges. When I talk to our ESCOM team, when I look at most of you, you've been in this sector for the last 10, 15, 20, 25 years. We understand the sector. If we're going to set up a task force that comes here for six months to try and prescribe solutions, to try and sort out power purchase agreements, I was here for two and a half years. I'm a fairly technical person, but I can tell you I did not quite understand the science of PPA in terms of the competing interest that ensures that a project is bankable, that ensures that the value chain customer at the end of the line who consumes the service and pays makes business sense of the power purchase that is signed for 25 years uh, in the last 25 years 
so that makes business sense today. So you are the people who are going to help us to address those challenges, uh, to ensure that we serve our customers. We not only serve customers in Kenya, we are able to trade in power and send power to the region. I think the power trading uh, interconnection is fairly elaborate today, it's fairly built. We just, I'm told today by some of you who are managing uh, the control center that as we speak today, we are having an inflow of up to 75 megawatts of power from Ethiopia. We could also be feeding back because the line is a two-way. So the challenge that we face under the least cost power development plan is not a major challenge today because it did not anticipate export of power. And if we can generate power at a very competitive cost, we should be able to support South Africa. We can support Uganda, who supported us with a few megawatts some years ago. We can send that power to Ethiopia and support Ethiopia. What, what drives economies in Europe is the power trade. The fact that if you have got, instead of venting steam at night, we should be generating that power and selling to uh, other clients who are on different time zones, uh, unlike Kenya, and uh, where our peak consumption is not the peak of other countries in Africa. And I can assure you that working together, we can be able to generate um, adequate power, competitive cost of energy that we can sell to the region. Uh, there is no reason why we are stuck only generating for this economy. Because if we're really generating power for our economy, uh, it may also not be good for the manufacturing se sector because manufacturing sector needs competitive cost of energy. That when you introduce the costing and cost allocation of power into the components they produce, their products are still able to stay most, more competitive than power generated from other jurisdictions. And that way, we can be able to attract investors to come to our energy parks and manufacture products from maybe Olkaria, Dongokundu, and some of the special economic zones where we are giving advantage to the manufacturers. We're giving cost advantage. We should be giving uh, locational advantage because of availability of steam for direct use, availability of power which is um, competitively better than other jurisdiction and not just for powering our homes. So we'll work together to see how to reduce the cost of power. I know we dispatch power to from the IPPs and the generators like Kenjan at about 10 cents US average, maybe the 9 cents. And honestly, by the time we are dispatching that power to the economy at 20 cents, 22 cents, it is something that we need to address. And I say the solution will come from where? Inside. We must really inculcate and have the change from inside to ensure that we get the right cost of power to drive not only our economy, but to power the economy of Kenya by employing our youth, by employing industry to manufacture out of Kenya for export, for export of goods which will have a premium cost advantage because they've been manufactured out of competitive cost of power, they've been manufactured using green energy because we are all aware that we dispatch up to 90% uh, green energy into our grid today. So we'll work together. Uh, thank you very much for the warm welcome. Like I did request of you, if I say so much and you forget all of it, don't forget that I did say, I think I've come here for a purpose. And we want to get and despite the cost of power at competitive price, reliable, and ensure that we can drive this economy. There is absolutely no reason why today, uh, we also cover, I also cover the portfolio of petroleum. And petroleum today, and for a while, operates on what you call a framework of oil marketing companies. They operate out of off balance sheet. There is no petroleum product which sits on government balance sheet. It is traded in by the oil marketing companies. They meet every week. They do their open tender. They buy petroleum from uh, international markets on published plus prices. 
They only add a small premium and freight through a competitive process. And we have had security of supply for the years um, through that process. Why we would be having zero stocks? We don't have any stocks. We are, sometimes we are told, where is the security of supply? Where is our stocks for six months? But as long as the world is peaceful, we don't have a problem. We have got petroleum. Uh, we have not gone, when we have not had petroleum in the pump prices, it was more of a dollar challenge. It was more of what we did not do in government. It is not what the private sector did not do. Why am I talking to that? When we come in and say, Kenya Power, why are you holding stocks of nine billion on your books? Is it a good debt to have goods which could almost be classified as dead stock? Nine billion. Why don't we operate more just in time? Because uh, the competition today uh, with internet um, and online buying, I know that you cannot buy the kind of goods we need to support the energy sector online. But if we operate it closely, closer to just in time, there is no reason why we, you know, for goods to be classified as dead stock, it's because they've been sitting there for a while and they may not be useful uh, for today's uh, technology. They may not be useful for today's uh, uh, requirements. So to have stocks which are lying in the tune of nine billion, and we celebrate a collection of debt of one billion in a year, we could actually really correct it from inside by ensuring that suppose it was four billion, we could release some five billion into our economy into the Kenya power and be able to do so many things. So I want to encourage us, uh, when, uh, CEO and your team, to address the issue of over-procuring. These are issues which, when viewed from outside, people think we are here for a different purpose. And, but I don't think really uh, somebody bought because of that purpose. Maybe are we not planning well? Can we do better plans so that when we purchase, we purchase what is needed and uh, really uh, what we are going to consume and finish. And we do not have to hold, even if they are going to be used, why do we have to have stocks that is holding our money? Life is about cash flow. What Safaricom has done in M-Pesa is to facilitate movement of cash. The economy uh, may not be wealthy, but the fact that I can move my cash to you when you need it, and when you don't need it, you move to the different person and move it across the country because of technology. We are able to employ the same shilling and stretch it and use it 100 times in a day instead of using once. So when goods are lying at 9 billion, and that is cash that should be moving in the economy of Kenya power, we are really doing a disservice to ourselves. So I want to encourage us to address some of those uh, challenges, address the challenge that has been mentioned. We discussed the issue of uh, uh, power losses, particularly commercial losses. I know technical, we need investment, and we are going to work together to unlock some of the challenges we face. We have uh, offered service to uh, RARE or to government through the last mile pro program, and we are owed 19 billion, which if it was in today, we can be able to do so many other things. But even having done that, the question of power losses doesn't seem to be a challenge that sits with a small consumer. The power losses can be addressed by talking to our top clients because uh, really, if you categorize your losses, I'm told commercial losses will be about 10% of the total losses uh, when you segregate technical and commercial losses. But when you zoom into the 10% commercial losses, about 60 to 70 percent, maybe 80 percent, are with the big power users. They are not the, what you call, uh, the last, what do you call, the, the lifeline tariff uh, users. So if those are the 300, 200 customers of the 8 million who are having a challenge in bypassing our meters, unless we are the ones facilitating customers to bypass the meters, there is no reason why we cannot reduce that 80% which is sitting with commercial. 
and instead, you know, if you go to Kibera and the Korogocho to manage the stealing of power, which constitutes five, ten percent, you'll do a big job and earn very small. So why don't we address the power losses emanating from the big corporate clients who may knowingly or unknowingly, who may have been facilitated by some of our staff who we have disciplined and they are out of employment, who may be facilitated by challenges of governance because some of us uh, don't share the same vision that is shared by all of us in the organization. If we can address that challenge of power losses, that is afflicting us to the tune of the die here 22%. If we can just address immediately on the 2080 rule, the challenge that is facing us and that is being carried by the corporate clients, we can be able to come out and achieve that 8% that Geoffrey Mooley talked about within the next one year. And honestly, if we move power losses from 22% to, you know, it doesn't sound true, that we can move from 22 minus 8 is what? 14? If we are doing 14% power losses, our cash flows will be so good because 8% of uh, 9 gigawatt, 9,000 gigawatt hours that you sold in this financial year is so significant that it can actually address most of our challenges. And we do not have to be looking at government to help us restructure our balance sheet or look at other innovative ways of raising money uh, to be able to address the challenge. So one quick win that we can all address is that 8%. Mully, if we can achieve 8%, if we can even achieve 4 in the first one year, uh, which is moving from 22 to 18, and move from 18 to 14 in the second year, we can really, and because we know where the challenge is, it is this metering, but now we have allowed you to buy your meters. We don't know why you have not bought those meters before. Uh, you know, you should not allow the politicians to come in and help us to manage the organization. So we've talked with Muli, we've said, please buy your 280,000 meters and connect those customers where you have taken the, where you have connected the homes, but the power is not going to the house because uh, we don't have meters. But it is not true that the power is not going to the house. Those unscrupulous people have already connected without the meter. That is where the 22% losses is coming from. So if we can connect those meters in the next uh, three months as soon as they come, address the challenge of the corporate power losses, which is really in the big players in the industry, we can certainly attain 4% in this coming financial year. And if we attain another 4%, in the coming financial year from commercial losses we will work on investments on some of those savings and address the technical losses to the tune of another one to two percent and really kenya should be the leader we should not be told in 2013 we started a program with world bank to manage power losses strengthening the network and rwanda today is at 15 percent losses and we are still at 22 where we started some 10 years ago so I want to be the team player to work closely with you to ensure we address and make Kenya power what it is to this economy. The strong link that it ought to be to deliver this country to being a newly industrialized uh, country. When you see our leaders building a standard gauge railway into what we are calling a special economic zone in um, Olkaria or in Naivasha, uh, to look for power. Why we were building that standard gauge railway is to, to, to really get locational advantage to the big manufacturers. I talked about locational advantage. There is cost advantage in, in a global business. So if we have built the standard gauge railway to Olkaria or to Naivasha, and we can today allow them to feed in direct uh, power from the generator from the generator, like a engine at 7 cents US. We are working so hard to build on policies that can really open up this country. So let's not be the inhibitor rather than being the facilitator to the investors who we want to come to this country. It's big investment to build that railway. It is big investment to license a special economic zone 
and say we'll give you not only cost advantage, we'll give you fiscal advantage. You'll be in a tax-free regime area where you will manufacture as if you are out of Kenya, export, and the only thing we are seeking is employment for our youth. We are seeking growth of economy. We are seeking to benefit in the tertiary benefits that come in with an industrialized country. So I want to encourage us to be what the salt of a company that is a significant uh, link in terms of providing power uh, that is competitive to support some of those government initiatives so that we can together uh, industrialize this country. Issues of governance, issues of uh, really character, we should be the best that we ought to be. Uh, I said earlier in, the, in your boardroom, when I was growing up, I used to be in telecommunications, and telecommunications power was always ahead of telecommunications in terms of competition. You used to pay better salary, as Kenya Power, you used to pay, have better terms of service for your staff in terms of uh, all the other benefits. But if you see the technolo technological changes which have taken place since then, uh, telecom, which was at that time looking like, you know, we were told when we were in telecom, if you want to see how to lay cables, go and look at Kenya Power. Because our cables were sulking, they were all over the place, we used to mount cables on the wall and uh, use anything to support our cables. I guess because telecom cables don't carry the current of energy that is carried by the power, whatever. And so we used to really be challenged by our leaders to say, look at Kenya Power, how the poles are in a straight line, how the wires are not sulking. But really, evolution and the advantage that telcos took to where they are today, to controlling a customer base of 40 million clients. And we are struggling when we have moved from 2 million to 8 million, we feel great. Yes, it is something to celebrate, but can we move to 20 million? Can our cables be on the straight line, the way they used to be those days? Can we, I mean, they are dangerous. Let's not lay them carelessly over, over the buildings or allow buildings to build too close to the power lines. There are regulations that require certain distances because they are dangerous. So let's not be the telco of yesterday who was laying cables across the wall using any uncertified uh, pylons to, to carry the power. Today, those days, there was no pylon of Kenya power which, which could go down. Today we see pylons of Kenya power falling. So we really, there is room really for us to work on and, and, and be what we ought to be and be what we used to be before the advent of the technology. But if we follow technology and be the fiber company that we are today, and be the power company that we ought to be today. Go into smart poles. Smart poles, I don't think, will look like the pole I'm in front of me. Smart poles carry a certain characteristics. There is so much room for improvement. So I come in to really support us. I come in to support us to depoliticize Kenya power, to ensure that we allow the engineers to work. And those of us who come in to support you because um, we are the support departments, do that and do only that, instead of being loading unnecessary stocks into our stores, instead of buying pylons that will fall because they cannot carry the tension and the weight of the conductors and so on and so forth. So I want to encourage us to work. Uh, I want to again end by requesting us to support me to fulfill the vision for which God has brought me back to the energy sector. If you are going to walk the journey with me to fulfill that vision, you'll be a great team player. But if you are not going to support me to fulfill that dream, then maybe uh, you'll not be of much use to me. And if I decided not to walk the journey with you because uh, you basically are not helping me to fulfill the vision, then it will not be because um, I'm trying to be bad. Uh, I've invoked the name of God. There is something that we need to fulfill together to get Kenya Power, the company that wants to play the role it plays in this economy. But I want to assure you we'll work together. We will work to see which areas we can cut on cost 
even if we're going to look for tariff review, let's look for tariff review when we are managing the losses. Let's look for tariff review when we are managing our cost, the wastage, when we are managing the cost of our stocks, which could otherwise be dead stock today, and they are just sitting on our books. And sometimes if we are told to write them off, it doesn't look good for our balance sheet because it will impact on our profit. So you just want to leave them in the books because writing them off is telling the shareholders that the company is having problems. Let us leave a real life as Kenya power uh, in terms of supporting the uh, customers and in terms of supporting the shareholders. So as we look forward to the horizon, I want to basically promise Kenyans that this team sitting with me today, together with the ESCO team, ESCO, uh, executive team, we want to assure Kenyans that we'll deliver a better quality of service, we'll deliver a more cost competitive energy to our homes, we will work to support um, the network availability so that we can sell more power. If we were stocking the 3,000 uh, gigawatt hours that we bought and were not able to sell, I am told you bought 12,000 gigawatt hours in the accounts that are, are currently being finalized, but we only sold 9,000. If we were more innovative so that we sell all that 3,000 gigawatt hours between 12,000 that we bought and 3,000 and 9,000 that we sold, we certainly would make so much money. 3,000 out of 12,000 is 25%. So we bought 25% extra power that we are paying the generators. We are paying Kenjen and the IPPs, but we didn't sell that power. And somebody is paying for it. It is being paid for by the lifeline tariff customer. It is being paid for by the customer doing manufacturing, who we expect to sell their manufactured goods more competitively. And yet there is 25% cost on the power that they are paying for, and power that was bought and not sold. At the end, give me a dead stock near Fadali, at least something in the shelf. This one we bought and we didn't sell, and it has just evaporated. So we'll work together to address all those things so that um, we don't impede generation because we can also impede generation by saying, let us only buy 9,000. Ordinarily, we should even be selling 20,000 gigawatt hours. There's no reason why we cannot grow the economy and sell more power. So let me again uh, thank you. I did say I was just coming in from the time I was here in 2014-15 to now has been seven, eight years. So I'll be doing some little listening, but I would like to be a fast learner and run with you very quickly so that uh, time waits for no man. We want to really be part of the team that if an investor came today to Olkaria, we should be able to connect them tomorrow. If an investor came to Olkaria today, we don't want to feel like if we did a captive, a captive power, or if we did direct connection from uh, Kenjen, it will impact on our performance. Let us grow our market. Let us appreciate the fact that this economy must grow and Kenya Power will be part of the growth. But let's not be that company that is now worried that if cap captive power is built by investors coming in, if Kenjen connects customers directly, we will face a challenge. What do we need to do together to ensure that in the advent of direct connections that may be happening in a short while, in the advent of the DEFKIS, uh, the steel manufacturing company that was opened by the president the other day and who are generating or seeking for a license to generate 55 megawatts, uh, we still stay strong as Kenya Power and still be that Kong in the wheel that will deliver this country as a very critical element in the economic development of this country. So let me thank you again for welcoming you, Bwana CEO, Bwana PS. I've worked well with Bwana uh, Kialangwa. I feel like uh, he should be the PS that I should retain in the Ministry of Energy. Uh, if it was a bit hard on some of you, 
even as he leaves, I want you to know that this is a great man uh, for the short time. Um, for the short time I've been there, I think he desires change. And if we are difficult, then it's been hard on you. It's not because, uh, it's possibly because you've been difficult to address the necessary change. Um, the discipline, the discipline in the military, like has been said by some leaders uh, who have been here before us, is a discipline that they don't compromise. So maybe as the Alangwa leaves us, because um, there's a new PS coming who has been appointed and vetted by parliament, as he leaves us, if you forgot many things that he taught us, that discipline, and it's discipline that runs our family, it is discipline that runs our schools. It is the disciplined children who excel. It is the disciplined companies who perform. And I want to assure you, Wanahia Langwa, even as you leave us, we will basically um, maintain some of the character that you have left behind in the energy sector. We, we, we can build on it and change this sector and change this industry. So thank you very much as you uh, leave and uh, look at other ventures. We wish you good health, we wish you well, and I want to assure you we'll support you wherever you be. So let me leave it at that for today and encourage all of us to basically support us to deliver the vision for this sector. You have a great vision. I, I listened to it in your song, and if we mean it and we act it, we will be the true change that Kenya needs. Thank you, and may God bless you. Thank you very much. Can we do it in style? Please, let's appreciate him with a clap of the way we did earlier on. One, two, three, Tunde, Tunga, Bili, Tatu, Tunga, Tungua. Thank you for setting, taking your time off to be with us. Bwana Pias, uh, Major General Retired and Dr. Kiarangwa, we appreciate the time we have had with you. Thank you for the support. I, I have been uh, disciplined by him many times. Sometimes I've written the wrong letters and he tells me, come for it. Letters are not written like this. So I've grown out of his hands. He, he has been a father of all of us. And uh, we appreciate you and we wish you well where you are going. May God be with you. May God bless you. Uh, for the CS, we are going to work together. We're going to support the government. We are going to support you. Uh, now for all my fellow employees, thank you for taking your time off and, uh, you know, braving the reins, even to be here and to listen to the CS. Uh, that is a sign that uh, we are committed to this course. We welcome you, Wana PS, to interact more with us so that you can add value to us as a leadership and as employees of KP. Allow me uh, to end there and uh, welcome Kelvin to close with a word of prayer. Thank you. Thank you so much for the MD. Let's appreciate the MD also, please. No, 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 it's not general. Let's do it in style, the same way we did for the CS and the PS. One, two, three, let's go. Moja, Billy, Tatu, Funga, Okay, so we'll all be upstanding as we close um, off with a prayer. We started with prayer and we'll close it off with prayer.